Hello everyone, coming up on this edition of Living Blind with Corey Jackson, we are in the kitchen again and we are going to be making meatloaf. You know, I've heard many people say that you can put just about anything that you can eat in a meatloaf. I don't know how true that is, but I can tell you right now, I really enjoy this recipe. So set back, relax, and spend some time with me while we make meatloaf. Now I'm making a pretty good sized meatloaf, but I'll go over the ingredients that I'm using today. And some of them you're gonna think, what, why is he using that? But trust me, it tastes really good. But if there's something you wanna substitute by all means, go ahead and do that. So we're gonna be using two pounds of ground chuck, one pound of pork sausage, one can of diced tomatoes, one can of mushrooms, two eggs, and one box of stovetop chicken stuffing. Now that sounds disgusting, doesn't it? The stovetop stuffing adds your bread, more than enough bread, but it works out fine, and it adds all of your nice seasonings so you don't have to mess around with it. Now, I can make a meatloaf from scratch without a problem, and I do that on occasion, uh, but if I'm in a hurry and want to get done one done really quick, this is the way I go. Now, my family is not big into vegetables. Um, if I have the chance, I love to add green peppers and things like that to it. But since they don't care for that kind of stuff, we keep it out. So let's make some meatloaf. I think I've said in my videos before, I absolutely love my KitchenAid mixer. So we have some uh, fresh ground shuck here. Now you can use ground sirloin. It's good as well and it's less, you know, it, it's a lot more leaner. But we buy our meat from a butcher and we happen to like this pretty well. Um, there are times that we get it that it's a little uh, more lean than others, but for the most part, it's really good. So what I'm doing now is I'm adding in my two pounds of ground chuck, adding it directly to my KitchenAid stand mixer. So I've added those two packs of burger. Now I'm gonna add a pound of sausage. Again, we buy this sausage direct from the butcher. And compared to what you buy in the store, there is absolutely nothing like it. So I've gone ahead and I've put the paddle attachment on my stand mixer. And before we get too far into this, I'm just going to put this on here and allow it to mix through this meat. And then we will start adding our other, other ingredients. KitchenAid's working away. I'm not having to put any elbow grease into it. I'm telling you, if you don't have one of these, you need to get one. Best thing I ever purchased for the kitchen. Now I have this little chute that I can put on top of this mixer when I'm adding things in but I find it to be more trouble than it's worth. So I'm just very careful. And what I'm doing now is I'm adding in two slightly beaten eggs to the mixture. And we're gonna let those go for a few minutes. Are there any of you guys watching that did not grow up eating meatloaf for dinner on occasion? We love Sunday dinner around here. And a lot of times we have company on Sunday afternoon. So a meatloaf is one of those meals that's easy to feed more than just us. And that's the reason why I'm making such a large one today, because you never know who might drop in. And now I'm gonna go ahead and dump in my can of mushrooms. Now, I suppose that you could use, and these are drained by the way, you could use fresh mushrooms if you want. And I, if you wanted, and I think that would be really good. I've never done it. If you have, let me know how it turns out. Because that, that definitely would be something to consider trying. 
like I say, there's so many things that you can add to meatloaf. Um, I've had it all kinds of different ways, and I've had it, I've had it where it's been in gravy, where it's had a topping on it. Now I like to make a topping for my meatloaf, and I'll show you that here in a while, once it's baked for a little bit. But um, this, for as far as the base for making the meatloaf. This is a quick recipe and I just, I love it. It turns out great every time. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my uh, standard size can of diced tomatoes, juice and all. It's gonna give us plenty of liquid to soak up that extra stuffing that we're using because it, that's a lot of bread in the meatloaf. But you can honestly have this and it can be your meat and your starch all in one. You really don't have to make mashed potatoes or anything with it. Have this and a vegetable and you're all set. Now, if you were gonna use less meat, you definitely could cut back on the amount of stuffing you're using. That's entirely up to you. We've let this run for a few minutes. So now we are going to add in our box of stovetop stuffing. I have three pounds of meat here. So I'm going to use the whole box. And I usually, even if I'm making a smaller meatloaf, like a two pounder, I use the whole box because it just gives it an awesome flavor. Now, I'm not going to add it to the mixer all at once. I'll add about half of it, let it mix up a little bit, and then I'll add some more. Make sure, yep, yeah, it's locked good. It's not having a bit of trouble with it because that tomato that juice from those tomatoes is helping it to uh, incorporate this, these breadcrumbs from the stuffing without a problem. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add the rest of this. Ooh, spilled a little bit. That's okay though. There we go. And we're just gonna let this mix here for a few minutes. And uh, then we'll move on to the next step. And we've gone ahead and preheated the oven to 375 degrees. And we have out here a 13 by nine pan and we're gonna go ahead and just spray it here. Oh, you're saying, oh my gosh, that blind guy doesn't know what he's doing. That's Kong spray. Do you think I would really use this to spray the pan? I'm just screwing with y'all to see if you can figure it out. I am going to grab the real cooking spray and we're going to spray the pan we got to have a little fun during these videos right that'll give you all something to talk about that blind guy was fixing to put dog kong spray in the meatloaf i wouldn't want to go over there and eat all right i've had this mixing now for about three minutes so i think it's ready to go so what I'm going to do is pull this up out of here and I'm going to take my nice freshly washed hands and I'm going to clean off this beater. Now I can use a spoon to get a lot of it, but what happens is, is the sausage for some reason tends to kind of get wrapped around here. So you're better off just digging into it with your fingers. I mean, it could be worse. At least I didn't have to mix it all up by hand, but I still have to get my hands a little dirty. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna pull this sausage out of this beer, these little mm -hmm. things of sausage. It'll be absolutely fine. Now my mother mm -hmm. and my grandmother, mm -hmm. my mother's mother, make meatloaf the same way. Theirs is more of a, um, it's more of a, you wouldn't want to use it for a sandwich really. Um, theirs has the mushrooms and various peppers in it and it's kind of cooked in more of a tomato-y, uh, almost like a juice. Now I absolutely love it. Now, I always talk about my grandmas during these videos, but grandmas are good cooks. My grandma Jackson, her meatloaf was perfect for sandwiches. 
and I always loved going to her house when she would have leftover meatloaf, which wasn't very often. I mean, there was a big crowd of people there on Sundays. There wasn't any leftovers usually, but if there happened to be some leftover meatloaf, I always loved to have me a sandwich out of her cold meatloaf. Now this, this bucket of yuck, I'm sure it looks disgusting, but any kind of raw meat mixed up with stuff looks kind of disgusting. But what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and dump this out into our pan. And my fingers were already dirty. I'm just using them to scrape the bowl and I'm gonna to have to form it into a loaf anyway. Now they do sell, and I know a lot of people, a lot of blind people use these. You can buy like the um, hospital style rubber gloves that you can put on your hand. I am not afraid to get my hands a little dirty when you cook. If you don't get your hands a little dirty, you're not putting your heart into it, in my opinion. But you know, to each their own. So now I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna shape this into a loaf and it's going to be a big one, guys. This is going to be a big meatloaf. Why don't y'all stop over and have a piece? Stop over and have a piece of meatloaf with us. We'd love to have you. And uh, I'm just going to leave some room around the edges. And boy, that's a high meatloaf, too. That's going to cut some nice, nice size pieces right there. Check. All right, so our oven's heated to 375, so we're gonna throw this meatloaf in. Now, since I'm using round chuck in this recipe, I'm not gonna cover it because there's enough fat, it's not gonna go dry on us. If you were using ground sirloin without any sausage or anything like that, you may wanna consider covering it with some foil until you pull it out to put the topping on. So I'm gonna let this cook for around 40 minutes and then we're gonna come back and add our topping. Now it's time to make our topping. Uh, we're gonna to start out with two tablespoons of brown sugar. Just so you know, I don't do much measuring here, but I will do my best to talk you through it. And if I had to guess, I would say that I use around, oh, around three fourths of a cup of ketchup in this topping recipe. Now, some people use, I have used tomato sauce in it as well, and that works out well. You can use all kinds of different types of things when you're making this topping as well. Just, you know, try a little bit and taste it, see if you like it. And as far as the mustard concern is concerned, I do add a little bit of yellow mustard, probably around, oh, a half a teaspoon, because a little bit of mustard goes a long way. And then we're just gonna mix this all up. And when our meatloaf has cooked for about 40 minutes, we'll spread it on the top. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pull this meatloaf out. It's been cooking for around 40 minutes. Whew, this is a biggie, man. I'm gonna just set this up here. Sometimes I'll drain this fat off, but I'm not gonna mess with that today. I'm just gonna put our topping on. Put our topping on here. I'm gonna spread it around. made up just a little bit more of this and we wouldn't have had too much. This is a big old meatloaf. I think we've scraped it as dry as we're going to get it. And we're going to just put this back in the oven and cook it for about 30 more minutes and then we'll check the temperature of it to see if it's done. So we'll be back real soon. All right, folks, it's been about 30 minutes. So let's pull this meatloaf out, see if it's done. I'd be very surprised if it wasn't, to be honest with you. 
but still got to check the temperature. It needs to be 165 at least. I'm going to get out my trusty thermometer here. Jab it right down in here. Ooh. I'll poke it one more time. I think it's done. So we're about to eat some meatloaf. Thank you so much for watching today. Please feel free to leave your comments and suggestions. I do read through all of them. And if it's something that I can turn into a video, perhaps maybe I will do it. If you enjoy this content, please feel free to subscribe to my channel using the subscribe button on your screen. And so you won't miss future episodes, please click the notification bell so that you can be notified when new content is available. Have a wonderful day.